Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So just like the title and thumbnail suggest, it looks like uh, Gary is up to his old tricks as he sends a Wells notice over to Crypto.com and Crypto.com is not having it. So what we had today was an interesting story, which is no surprise anybody who's uh, followed along in the crypto space. Gary's being Gary. And I know some people absolutely hate Gary Gensler and some people are indifferent. I don't know anybody who likes him, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that does. But you have to remember, Gary's just doing his job. He's got his marching orders from whoever he got those marching orders from, and he is enforcing through regulation, a regulation through enforcement. And unfortunately, uh, this is bad news for us because he is under the impression that everything is security, except somehow for Bitcoin, which I understand, and Ethereum, which I really never did understand why he could say that Ethereum is not a security, but everything else is. Regardless, I've said this before and I'll say it again. The only way to deal with bullies is to punch them in the face. And if you're just going to sit back and let them sue you, they're going to sue you again. Just ask Kraken. It's happened to them twice. So I applaud Crypto.com. I applaud Consensus also for suing the government because that's what they should have done at the very beginning. Anyhow, Crypto.com sues SEC after receiving legal threat. And this is what we have. And this is from Crypto.com. This is the uh, this is the head, the founder or CEO. He says, our decision to sue the SEC follows our receipt of a Wells notice from the commission staff. So when you get a Wells notice, it's pretty much just saying to them, hey, look, we're going to sue you at some point. Just let you know. Have a great day, SEC. Illustrating the SEC's unauthorized and unjust regulation by enforcement campaign continues despite bipartisan indicators that the and this is just hearsay, that the next administration will take a more constructive and effective approach to advancing crypto in the U.S. First of all, we don't know who is going to be in the office as of in 2025. Our presidential election here in the United States is around 29 days away or something like that. So we'll see if somebody remains in office or somebody new comes in the office. Not for sure, but uh, this is uh, quite a presumptive statement that they're thinking that the next administration will take a more constructive and effective approach. I'm not for sure that is going to happen, regardless of who is staying or who is going. For now, improper SEC enforcement actions are part of the process of operating a legitimate and licensed crypto business in the United States. While this is an unprecedented move for our company to file suit against a federal agency, actions by that agency towards our industry have left us no other choice. And I can't blame crypto.com for just kind of sitting in the corner going, please don't sue us. And when it comes to your door, there's only one thing you have to do. Again, if you want to deal with bullies, there's only one way to deal with them. And we know what that is. So again, I applaud crypto.com for coming in. And remember, it's not like Gary Genzo and the SEC have had a stellar performance against our industry. They keep losing case over case, if not outright losing, going to a negative manner. And uh, we'll see how this all plays out. But again, I think this is uh, hopefully a step in the right direction. But it is interesting that it's not just us thinking this. There are a couple of other people that have actually uh, brought this up. This is uh, Anthony Scaramucci. And again, some people love the mooch. Some people hate him for his political views. But he does make a good point here. And he's going to talk about who could potentially get in the office or stay in the office, what that means for crypto. And then it's interesting where he talks about uh, the SEC and just how well they've done, as well as what could be the next big ETF to come forward. So I want you to take a listen to this. This is about a minute long. And the entire interview that you can uh, check out with the Mooch, is a link in the description, you can check that out. Let me make sure you can hear this perfectly. And here we go. Not a security. And therefore you can have an Ethereum ETF. And the question is, why would Solana be a security if Ethereum is not a security? So this is the stuff that drives the industry crazy. This is the hypocrisy of the current regulators. And so after the election, I'm sure these regulators that suck will get cleared out of the SEC and more pro-industry regulators will be put in, and so there would likely be a Solana ETF. 
But if uh, Harris wins, she keeps the same regulators. I think they're going to find ways to slow that down. So I still think there will be one. I just don't know when it, it would probably take longer. If you said to me first quarter of next year, if Trump wins, could we have a Solana ETF? I would say yes. If uh, he loses, could you still have a Solana ETF by the end of 2025? I say yes, because they'll win the court cases. And these guys have truly been terrible as regulators. They're bringing enforcement actions that are unfair. They're trying to regulate through enforcement and they're losing the court cases. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So I got to agree with the mooch here. And I think we've all, we're all kind of on the same consensus, which is that crypto and digital assets, they're inevitable. Bitcoin's inevitable. Even most of the altcoins, not most, I'd say some of the altcoins are inevitable. And it doesn't matter what happens in these court cases. It will happen. We'll have mass adoption. But the question you have to ask yourself is, how long will this actually take? And I think, just like the mooch said, and he said it very clearly, I'll say it again. If Trump is elected, could we have a Solana ETF in the first quarter? Yes. If he's not elected and Harris stays in the office, could we have a Solana ETF? Yeah. It'll just take some more time. So again, I don't know where you're going to vote Quite honestly, that's up to you and where you stand on this whole situation. It is not just a single issue vote, but uh, just take that for what you say. Anyhow, let me tell, let me show you anything about that in the comment section. And also some other good news, FTX. And this was actually uh, last uh, yesterday. Looks like uh, the judge approves the FTX bankruptcy plan. I know there was a lot of uh, misinformation or false information going out that uh, this was all going to happen uh, the first week of October, and then they were going to get all their money back. It's not. It's going to take about 60 days. But the judge did approve the FTX uh, bankruptcy plan, which is good. And it looks like it's going to happen within the next 60 days. So hopefully before the end of the year, a lot of those funds that were stolen by SBF and FTX and all the nonsense they were doing will flow back to the people. Unfortunately, this was a uh, post uh, from Nick over at Coin Bureau. And he says, look, don't get too excited after removing claims purchases, unlikely to reinvest and non-compliant claims, only about $8 billion is left to potentially enter the market. And we can just see here that estimated repayments, hedge funds, you know, they're gonna get their fund, their months back, claims in market X claim, estimated non-compliant claims. So the rest is gonna be about $8 billion flowing back into the hands of retail. Will they reinvest it? I would think that the majority would. And now some people say, well, who cares about 8 billion? We're at like $2.3 trillion per a market cap. And that is absolutely 100% true. But remember, if you have $8 billion flowing into the market, that's no chump change. And remember that, of course, when you have thin market books, when you have bots that are trading as things start to heat up, once they see like one section is uh, going up and they start to buy, and don't forget about people who are shorting, then all of a sudden that the price goes up, they get liquidated. And then the price starts to appreciate rapidly. Again, this is a market of only $2.3 trillion. I know people think that's $8 billion or even $3 billion isn't that big of a deal, but I think it is. And hopefully, as time goes on, we'll see exactly how fast it can actually go up. So that is uh, that piece. But I cannot give you constantly good news without a little balance. Sorry, this is not a Moon Boy channel. And I find this just like we talked about. If you got $8 billion, $3 billion, wherever else it is, that can move markets one way, but it works in the exact opposite. This is from Look On Chain. It looks like the US government now appears free to sell 69,000 Bitcoin, Bitcoin confiscated from Silk Road. On October 7th, just two days ago, the US, no, yesterday, right? What is the day today? It is, yeah, it was just yesterday. On October 7th, the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear Battleborn Investments case over the ownership of 69,370 Bitcoin, which is $4.3 billion. This was seized from Silk Road, giving the government full control over the seized funds. Last time the government moved Bitcoin was two months ago when it moved $2 billion worth, of which 10,000 Bitcoin was transferred to Coinbase Prime. The U.S. government currently holds... $12 billion, of which 69,000 Bitcoin or 4.3 related to Silk Road's image X, has remained untouched in wallet, blah, 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 for four years. So 
Again, I think they're going to sell. It's not like the current administration is in any rush to hold on to Bitcoin. They proved that two months ago. So we'll see where this all goes. And again, I just wish they'd get out of the way and just sell like crazy so we can dump the market and I can pick up some cheap Bitcoin. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then lastly, before we get into a little Q&A, scams. We talk about this a lot and I realize that it doesn't matter how much I teach or how much I harp on it, things are gonna fall through the cracks and that's just how it is. And there's a sad story, which I think is going to happen more and more, especially as the market keeps up. This was from The Block. They said over 5 million in crypto stolen from Coinbase users an alleged recent social engineering scheme. This was uh, a quote from Zach XPT. If you don't follow him on Twitter or X, pretty interesting character. He pretty much just does cyber sleuthing and tries to get back people's funds, which I can appreciate. But he states in April 2024, an elderly victim from the U.S. was targeted by Indian call scammers posing as Coinbase support, resulting in a large portion of the life savings stolen. Elderly victim held funds on a ledger hardware device and was convinced to move them after scammers said their exchange account was compromised. According to Zach XBT, approximately 15 Bitcoin were sent to an unlabeled decentralized exchange on August 10th, the day after the scheme was perpetrated and then moved on to Tron. Specifically, stolen funds inflows, and just so you know, over time, specifically, stolen fund inflows nearly doubled from 857 million to $1.58 billion, and this was over quarter over quarter. Last month, Zach XBT disclosed he participated in an investigation with law enforcement that found a hacking group stole $243 million from a single, I don't know who this person is, from a single unnamed individual, they lost $243 million from a hack. Crazy. So again, like we talk about on this show, on this channel, we talk about scams and everything else, it's just Unfortunately, it's just inevitable. I know people will say, well, you know, banks are the worst and they're the most evil and they're awful. Sometimes I look at it and I go, I just don't think that some people can handle it, really. Like when you're elderly and you're trying to do these things and you're trying to keep up with everything, let's be honest. I mean, there's a slowdown, right? I just unfortunately think that sometimes people are going to get scammed and that's pretty much how it is. Hopefully you don't get screwed out of everything. So if you, you have talked to your parents, grandparents, whoever else it is, and you've gotten them into crypto digital assets and you haven't taught them about all the things that have to do with scams and illegal activity, you are at fault. There is a link in the description where you can find the four or five most pressing videos that you can watch in crypto and two of those have to do with scams. I would behoove you, it would behoove you to actually watch those videos so you can instruct the people that you got into crypto, and hopefully you're doing the right things by keeping them in. And lastly, ah, that's a good story. I like this one. So we know that there's a uh, uh, Hurricane Milton, I guess, uh, barreling down to Florida. So I expect to see massive damage. And we just got over Hurricane Helene. But uh, no matter what you think about on the side of the government, if they're helping or not helping, I just thought this was a great story. Jason and Brittany Aldean, if you don't know, they're country music stars. They raised $7 million for the victims of Elaine. They donated half a million themselves. All funds were turned over to Samaritan's Purse. I don't know who Samaritan's Purse is, but I took a look. There's a, there's a uh, website I go to called Charity Navigator, which if you take a look at some of these charities, they kind of suck. They pretty much like they grab funds and then they go to fund their own operation. And it's like for every dollar, like 90 cents is being used for themselves. Well, not this one. Samaritan's Purse apparently has 100%. Uh, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> Four stars. Four star charity, accountability and finance, Christian based. And there's a link in the description for the Cherry Navigator, specifically to Samaritan's Purse. So if you'd like to, what does this look like actually? Yeah, yeah. So if you'd like to donate to them, I'll be donating today. Uh, this is the website and uh, this could help out a lot of people and it looks like it's going to mostly uh, to hurricane victims. So that is it for today. Let me know what you think about that in the comments and uh, that's it. We'll do a little Q&A, answer all your questions, the best of my abilities and we'll go from there. But if you got to take off, take off. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it.